and welcome to Take Flight Live with Phoenix Stage Company, an award-winning 100% volunteer community theater organization located in Oakville, Connecticut. I'm Ed Bassett, Executive Director of Phoenix Stage Company and your host here with Tim Phillips. Hello! Oh, what, what's this? This is our social distancing curtain, Tim, so oh. that we can stand close together. Oh, okay. Yeah, also in the room with us today is our techie producer, Michael Calabrese. Say hello, Michael. He can't, he hear, can't us. hear us. So. Uh, so we'll say hello. Hello yeah, for Michael. Michael. And then uh, also our lighting genius, Al Hathaway, is in the room. Say hello, Al. Hi, everybody. Uh, so, uh, Tim, yeah. why are we dressed like this? Because we are going to be cooking on tonight's show or something like that. You look a little bit like the Swedish chef. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> you, Except you, you don't have the big giant mustache. Well, and and what do you have? There? I'm drinking a black hog. Hog Lager, the sexiest pilsner since 2016. You, it says that. so on the can. Must work. I but am. Where's where's your? You don't. You're not having. I'm gonna have coffee today. Al is hooking me up with coffee. Okay. Al, Al we socially uh, do this distance. Social. Please? Here we go. Look at it. See. Oh, it's an invention. It's a podcast invention. That's a, Thank Halloween you very special. much, Al. He was eight feet away when wow. he did that. That was wow. awesome. Nice. So we have a very special to the show today. We have a very special guest, Colleen Renzula. That's right. She has her own uh, cooking show on YouTube, Cooking with Colleen Renzula. Uh, she's a longtime Phoenix volunteer and a volunteer with a lot of other uh, theater companies. Many of our viewers know her very well. So we're really excited to have her here with us. Yeah. When we heard that she had this cooking show, it was really exciting. And I went and subscribed to it on YouTube. There'll so you so. can as yeah. well. There'll be yeah. a link there so you can... So you can connect with her. And we just thought it'd be really fun to have her on. And I think this was a, as a result, we can ask her when she comes up, but I think this was also a result of COVID-19 that she had all this free time at home and she's been thinking about it and she started doing her own show. Yeah, we'll, have to, we'll find out more when we start talking to Colleen. And of course, we're going to play our game. <gasps> yes. Yes. Jargon um, gymnastics. Jargon gymnastics. What language are we working with today, Tim? She is very lucky that she'll be getting three words that are Yiddish. Yiddish. Well, that'll be fun. Yes. Yeah, that's There's great. There's a lot of Yiddish words we already know that we have. It's uh, it's it's true. Yes. Yeah. Like Schmuck. A well, what? Schmuck. What did you call me up? That's, ha, see, I'm safe. <laughs> ah. there, yeah, it's really, it's really awesome. So a little update on Phoenix Stage Company. Uh, we've installed some new lighting downstairs in the laundry room so we can see what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So we know when the clothes are actually clean. Yes. We've relabeled some prop things and we're doing some work like that. Still doing some work around the building. Still looking forward to our opening sometime in November. Fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. It's something that we're, we're kind of hoping for. Because everybody all around the state, we're seeing businesses starting to open up. We're, we were just talking off stage uh, before going on the air about uh, uh, June 17th, the state is open, start opening up a little bit more of the state. Uh, movie theaters are talking about opening. Uh, I heard a podcast today about all the changes that these movie theaters are gonna have to go through. And live theater is gonna have to be the same way. We're gonna have to make some changes. We sure will. It's gonna be, it, when you come see the show, finally, when you come see a show, oh, it'll be a little different here. But yeah. it's still going to be Phoenix State. It'll still be great theater, though. Yes, absolutely. We're, we're looking very forward to opening again. Mm -hmm. So uh, with, without further ado, we're going to get this going. So I need to come over here because okay, I'm doing, I'm I'm doing some techie here. stuff for Michael, too. Yeah. I'm, uh, I have to make sure I do this, right, Michael? I, I got all my, my stuff. Turn up my volume. And, I got my and stuff. The, and then we have to do this. So hold, we're going okay. to get here. Okay. And now... The moment you've all been waiting for, a visit with Colleen Renzulo. You've seen her in more than just a few shows uh, here at Phoenix Stage Company, mm -hmm. right? Yep. She was just on stage in... Drinking Habits 2! Right, and pre previous to that, of course, she was in Drinking Habits 1. You yes. saw her in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, Amazing. Cover of Life, Amazing. Anybody Home, Cemetery Club, and so much more. She directed you in the dining room. Yes. That was here uh, in our very first season here. Yes. Uh, and, and uh, it did. It had great lights, great lights Al. You, you're right. And she was in rehearsal with the Goshen players yes. just before this shutdown. I know there's something funky going out with you people out there on chat because Michael is laughing over there in the corner. So be nice to us. Be kind. Uh, so without any further ado, Colleen, are you there? I'm here. Hi, Colleen. Hi, Colleen. It's so Welcome good. To kitchen. So good kitchen. to see you. So good to see you. 
Wow, look at you with that nice apron on, cooking with Colleen. Wow. I have, this, I have to brand myself, you know. This is your actual home kitchen, right? This is my actual home kitchen in my, a three-family house, and yes, yes, it's oh. so glamorous. Nice. And and when did you get the idea to 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 start doing this kind of? Uh, have, first of all, were you always interested in, in cooking and baking? Oh my God! Well, the, one of the reasons I'm obsessed, I'm completely obsessed with cooking shows, and and cooking is a form of therapy for me. So uh, mm -hmm. a lot of times while I'm cooking by myself in my therapy, I pretend that I'm on a cooking show. Oh. So I explain what I would be doing and whatnot. And, and one day I was bored out of my mind and I was going to make meatballs. So I said, oh, I'm going to record it. So I recorded like a three hour video. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, one of our podcasts when we first yeah. started. So since then, I've, I've learned iMovie, and I'm learning all about editing, and I'm learning how to do some special effects and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I'm toying with all different styles of cooking. Sometimes I don't feel like putting on decent clothes or makeup or whatever. So you just see my hands. So, oh, you know, okay. <laughs> actually, well, Tim, Tim had mentioned in the conversation just before you popped on to us that this really happened during the shutdown, that this really kind of is one of the things that came out of that. Is it something you're going to continue beyond this? Yeah, because I'm having, you know, I, initially I was going to be doing it once a week, but then I ended up taking on other projects. I'm uh, learning editing skills. I've been doing editing for my school and, and different projects. So I haven't had time to do my own stuff. And I, I was going to do like once a week videos, but that's kind of fallen by the wayside. And I have to kind of find time now to do something in my own kitchen. But I did, I do do some uh, quick TikTok videos which are kind of cool like when I'm, I'm doing something they're like 30 seconds boom 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 and wow you know. okay well I have to tell you I love your videos I, I subscribed to your channel as soon as I found out and I've gone back and watched every single one of them as do I and I I love them yes and I love when Carol pops in and oh, yeah. he's, he's so. wandering around here so he'll probably I've got his stool right next to me so he might end up you know jumping up and checking out what I'm doing so we should probably explain that Carl is not an offspring um, but he's your cat He's my, he's my cat. He's my Sphinx cat. And he's very interesting. He's very uh, curious. So when my, my second video, uh, when I was, I had, I didn't have any of the equipment that I had to record. I had it, my camera propped up on the counter for me. And in the middle of me doing this great presentation, boom, he knocks over my camera. So. Cats. 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 I'll do that. Uh, Colleen, I wanted to ask you, um, uh, I was very, very fond of this. The, the recipe that you're going to share with us today, share on our podcast, the, the slutty brownies. Your video for slutty brownies had a lot of editing in it, a lot of snippets here and there. That seems to be, uh, that's something you've been working on, isn't it? Well, you know, I just got a kick out of uh, out of the, the name and, you know, I, I'm not a baker. So this is a perfect baking for me because there's no measuring. I made some uh, brownie mix, pre-made, and oh. it's it's uh -oh. layering. So that's perfect baking for me. But my girlfriend was telling me about it. Her daughters made it and I, I just got the biggest kick out of it. So I was like, slutty brownies, slutty brownies. Ah, but you, you, you're really getting good at the editing part of it though. That's, that's, that's the second part of the whole thing. It's not just a straight shot uh, from start to finish. It's, it's all the other stuff you throw in there. Right. Is that, are you self-taught on editing? Yes. Oh yes. I, I've, oh. I've done uh, YouTube, I, I, I have, Everything you want to learn in life, you can learn on YouTube. So uh -huh. I went to YouTube, and I uh, I do also. I did a course on Udemy. I paid for a course; it was relatively cheap on iMovie, a beginner's course, and it just got me started because I never worked on editing software. So now, now uh, for my school, I can do like explosions and uh, you know, magical electrical things. So I'm getting. You know, oh, you have to send some of that to us. We could use some of that here. I know. I know. <laughs> exploding phoenix behind Woo! us yeah yeah that that'd be great um I'm, I'm a little i'm a little behind here i i didn't i just had the brownie mix i haven't done what? you know what that's okay we'll mix that up we'll mix we're that gonna up. we're gonna cut to colleen and let you take it away right. and tim will make his brownie mix while you're started and you we'll may, keep going you may hear some noise in the background just just, just ignore him just ignore him. I'll, I'll just ignore okay in the corner okay so this is such a simple simple recipe Again, like I said, I don't bake, but I got the last time in my video, you will see, I did them in a muffin pan, which I think is much easier, but traditionally they're done in a brownie pan. So, 
you know, if you want to do them in muffin pan, they're great. You just layer the chocolate chip cookie, the Oreo cookie, the Reese's peanut butter, and then brownie mix. But we've got this. The easiest thing to do for later takeout is to line your, your baking dish with, with some tin foil. I mean, if you don't have tin foil, don't worry about it. Just spray the pan with your pan, which I have right here, handy dandy pan. And we're just gonna spray pan. All right, so now this is the fun part. My hands are clean. I wash my hands. Now, when I did the video, I was able to find- I'm sorry, I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm working on it, Kelly. I'll be right back. You all right? Uh, oh. Sorry. All right. Oh. You got the chocolate chip cookie, prepared chocolate chip cookie dough. If you had the little cookies all pre-cut, you can just put them in. But I'm just gonna dollop some cookie dough onto the bottom of my baking dish. And again, like I said, I'm not a baker, so I'm not fancy. Take your little fingers and let's mush down that chocolate chip cookie onto the bottom. So this is like, it's like a chocolate chip cookie crust. Yeah, yeah, crust, that's what it is. It's a chocolate chip cookie crust. And so you're gonna mush that down so that your whole bottom, I don't have enough here. So your whole bottom of your baking dish is going to be chocolate chip cookies. And once you push it down, push it down. And it doesn't have to be perfect. As a matter of fact, if there's some holes in there, great, because then the brownie mix will get down in it. So you've got your chocolate chip cookie dough, just kind of matted down on the bottom of your baking dish. And because my kit, my sink is way off in the other room, I have a handy dandy little bowl of water so that I can clean my hands without leaving the scene. How do you like that? All right, so the next step is to start layering, layering for the bloody brownies. First layer, Oreo cookies, or any kind of, you know, dark cookie with, I got the double stuff, of course, because you know, more is better. Well, I have a question on that. Yeah. Double, stuff, double stuff versus regular. Does it affect the flavor at all to have double stuff or not? I think it's just more of good things. And I like the filling on, a, on an Oreo cookie. So that just that gives uh, more filling. So I don't think it changes the taste at all. It might be a little little bit more decadent and, you know, decadence. Don't they make like different flavor Oreos for holidays? Oh, I know, right? So I'm going to just, because you don't have to have them keep them perfect. I'm just going to place them. Yeah. So there, second layer. Okay. Are you okay? Yep. That's it. That's all you got to do. Now okay. this next layer is a little bit tricky because, you know, in the muffin tin, it was so much easier. Put the chocolate chip cookie in, you put the, um, the Oreo cookie, then you put the Reese's, then you pour the, it was easy. You didn't have to worry about things falling over. But when things aren't perfectly lined up, they fall over. But it's all gonna get cooked and light of melt together. Yeah, anyway, yeah, I yeah. put my Reese's peanut butter cups in the refrigerator because it's a little humid out tonight, and I've got a 350 degree oven. Forgot to tell you that if you haven't turned on your oven, 350. Turn I on your oven. Have my oven yet? Wait, <laughs> you have an oven? No, we no Tim. It's just we, a prop. Yeah, it's a prop. It's okay. Okay. What? what, what pretend it's 350. <laughs> all right. So now I'm just going to place, strategically place the Reese's peanut butter cups. And uh, I got two different sizes because my husband went and bought me what I needed, but um, he didn't buy me enough because I wanted to do a practice run. Uh, uh, so I needed more. So Yeah, I was going to ask that question if it mattered if they were snack size or full size. Yeah, no, because it's all going to melt together. You know, you know, my, my dad was a diabetic and he, he was in the hospital one time getting classes and his nutritionist told him that the best food he could have in his refrigerator was Reese's peanut butter cups. Really? Well, yeah. Because a peanut butter cup has the essential amount of fatty acids and sugar and protein that he would need. And they have the dark chocolate Reese's 
They do. I just couldn't get them to stop eating the whole bag. <laughs> like, no, have them in your refrigerator so you can have one. So in essence, then, part of the slutty brownies is health food. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> I'm, I'm sold. I'm sold. Okay. It's about this much of the brownie, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'll take anything I get right now. All right, so we've strategically placed doesn't have to be perfect because you're just going to pour the brownie mix over this whole thing and then bake it together and it's all going to melt together. So this is the best kind of baking in my opinion because I don't have flour all over the place which is typically how I bake. I, I just make a terrible mess when I do that and the problem that I have with baking is that I have to measure and I'm, I'm a cook and I've been cooking for years. I come from a long line of really, really, really good cooks and none of them measured. And that was another reason why I wanted to do the video too, Ed. Um, I, the, my first video was, I thought about my great grandmother and my grandmother and my mother's recipes. And I thought, oh, how wonderful if we had this technology when they were alive, because they never wrote down their recipes. So if they recorded it, I would have recorded their recipes and I would have it for posterity. Now I'm just trying to figure out what they put in their, their recipes. And you know, sometimes I get it and sometimes I don't. So this way here someday when maybe my daughter takes an interest in, in cooking, which she's not very interested in right now, maybe she'll be interested in cooking one of my recipes. So that's one of the other reasons why I, I do the video. All right. So I've got my handy dandy little a measuring cup that has a little spout on it. So this makes for easy pouring. My other one, I did it in a bowl and it wasn't so easy to pour it in. So you're going to take your prepared brownie mix and just pour it over the top. Get it around the edges first. So I'm going around the outside first, then the inside. And it's all, when it bakes, it's all going to puff up and take up all the room. It's, you know, it's almost like a peanut butter lava cakes in some parts of it. So we're gonna put all that, oh, you know what? I'm gonna get a spatula, oh, my spatula's right here because you have to get every little bit of the goodness that's in this bowl. And this was, you know, for a while there, it was difficult to find uh, brownie mix or cake mix or flour, you know, with everybody was uh, buying up all these weird things. So I, when I first made it, the recipe that I made on my video, it was some kind of like health food kind of brownie. So it came out a little dry. So I'm really looking forward to this brownie mix because it's dark chocolate. It's a dark chocolate brownie mix. And I thought I could be even more decadent and put chocolate chips in brownie mix, but I said, no. I mean, as it is, they're gonna hitch us up to insulin as it is, but. Mm, so espresso, we got espresso chips are my favorite. Oh, that, oh, now you've given me an idea. Espresso chips with peanut butter and chocolate and Oreo cookies. Oh my goodness. I think that might be the next one. Where do you find yours? Uh, Lori Poulin's kitchen. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> I've never actually, I've never actually bought any myself, but Lori Poulin has them in her kitchen. So I just eat them there. All right, so we have to ask Lori where she gets her, uh, her. <laughs> All right, so we have poured it over. Let's see. Enough. Oh. Mm. You can still see the the peanut butter cups, but like I said, when you cook it, it's all going to puff up. And the one thing that I can tell you with, with this kind of recipe, especially with the warm weather like this, I the recipe calls for like, if you're gonna, gonna make regular brownies, it's like 35 minutes for a nine by nine pan, mm, not with these. So I did them about 45 minutes, took it out, still didn't really like how done I thought they were. So I put them in for another 10 minutes. So between 45 minutes to an hour when you have this size pan and all the gooey stuff that you have inside. So I'm gonna, this is ready for the oven. I mean, how simple is that? It's really awesome. You know, when I made some this morning and uh, I had a hard time, you know how you stick a toothpick in the middle. I didn't have any toothpicks, so I was sticking a fork in. I kept hitting a peanut butter cup. So it was gooey when it came out regardless. So I just had to kind of guess by the feel of the top. And yeah, but they were pretty awesome. They were yeah. pretty awesome. So did uh, Tim finish making his brownie mix yet? Uh, well, we've uh, run uh, into uh, some, as you can see, we've uh, run into some problems uh, with Tim. Uh, He's, uh, yeah. he, he tried to lick the things. He didn't take them off. Uh, uh, 
You have to take them. What? Push this. <laughs> so it's okay. I made a batch earlier, so we don't have to depend on Tim's mess. But it's okay. These babies are ready to go in the oven. So I'm going to put these in the oven. You pop those in the oven and then come back to us and we have a game to play. Oh, all right. Yeah, we have a great game to play. Um, Tim, are you okay with playing my brownies yet? I can my mess. I play in my mess all the time. Look, there's a, oh, 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 yeah. Okay. You take that. Okay. <laughs> wow. Are we going to look at the finished product or are we going to play the game first? Let's oh. play the game and then we'll go to the finished product. All right. Yeah. Okay. So come around your corner there. We saw Carl kind of sneaking around in the back there a little bit. Yeah. Boy, I got it all over everything. Yeah. You're you're wearing most of the chocolate, I think, Tim. Well, I'll just save the apron for later tonight. It's a little bit of a mess. Colleen, we have some suggestions of other chocolate chips coming up in the chat. Um, Peanut butter chips, white chocolate chips. So a lot of uh, other suggestions. Peanut butter chips with peanut butter cups. That's some major protein peanut butter. Yes. See, then that would be the real healthy slutty brownie. Right. That's Ooh. the really healthy ones. But you know, when they come out, because they come out like a lava cake, you got to, I'm thinking there's two ways to, to eat these brownies. There's warm right out of the oven where you put it in a bowl and it kind of oozes. Then you get some vanilla ice cream. You throw some vanilla ice cream on top. Oh my God. Or what I did, because it's so warm out today, I put it in the refrigerator. So God only knows whether I'll be able to hack into it when, when I take it out of the refrigerator. Maybe I should take it out of the refrigerator now. You can always zap it a little bit with a microwave too. That'll remelt some things. Right? Or a Maybe. chainsaw would probably. I'm just, I'm just gonna take it out of the refrigerator real quick. Okay, okay you take you that out. out. And while she's doing that, we're gonna introduce our game. <laughs> There's no more we're talking around, it's okay. okay. All right. So, so this game is called Jargon Gymnastics. Stretch your mind. And your tongue. And your tongue. Yeah, so you're playing, Colleen, for yourself and a subscriber that you don't know yet. All right. So, so Tim has worked very, very hard. You have chocolate all over your face. <laughs> and so okay. he is, uh, he's going to give you the words and some choices uh, for definitions. Tim, are you ready? Yes, as, as we mentioned, your uh, language, if you will, is Yiddish. Okay. Which we talked about, there's a lot of Yiddish words in, in our everyday vocabulary. These three, probably not so much. So what we're gonna do is we'll give you the word and then three possible dis, uh, definitions. Get two out of three right, you win the prize, including, including. Ooh, we're not supposed to tell him okay. that. A prize. A prize. <laughs> Okay, so here's your first word. Nevis, N-E-B-I-S-H. Is it one, when you're hungry, but not for a full meal, just a little bit hungry, you know, really craving something salty. Is it two, a small semi-sweet fruit found only in Levittown? Or number three, the term used for a person of no major importance, nobody special. That's one word I've never, that's a Yiddish word I've never heard. So I'm going to go with a, a person of no importance, number three. Ding, ding, ding. That's correct. That is a person, right. A man of no importance. That's right. You're I'm a nebbish. You're a person. It's a good show. All right. Now, this second word, if you remember your 70s pretty well, you might remember this word. Shlamazel. Shlamazel. Hoss and pepper, blah, 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 blah. We're going to do it. <laughs> now, is a slamazel A, a term for a brewmaster specializing in pilsners? B, a clumsy person, especially around pretty ladies. Or three. Or three. <laughs> An in invention never patented that dispenses water that's eh, not too hot, not too cold. I, I, I'm going to go with two. Wow, Colleen, that is two in a two row. For two for two. It is a clumsy. You. I kind of made up the, the pretty lady part, but it is basically a clumsy person. Okay. Well, now, klutz, I think klutz is, is a klutz Yiddish? Klutz is Yiddish too, yes, absolutely. Now, this is for the clean sweep. You've already won a prize for you and a prize for one of our subscribers. Yeah. Shicker. 
S-H-I-K-K-E-R. I hope I'm saying that right. It is, is Shikar number one, the Yiddish term for a, a Jew who prefers to remain beardless. Is it number two, the Yiddish term for a drunkard, Jew or otherwise? Or is it number three, the Yiddish term for blowing off a blind date after seeing her at the bar? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh no. Okay, I'm gonna go with two. Wow! Three for three! Three for three, Colleen! Wow! Congratulations! Wow. That's amazing! It is indeed a term for a Jewish term for none of those terms were on the amazing Mrs. Maisel, so I am shocked. Well, yeah. to say that's just as well, then that we really worked your brain today. It's true, so, it's true. Colleen, you have to pick a number between two and fifteen. Okay. Thirteen. Number thirteen. So, you and Dana Willie have won a custom Take Flight with Phoenix Stage Company COVID mask I used that and a Theater Strong bracelet. Our new bracelets, Phoenix Stage <laughs> Company Theater Strong. I love it. So, we'll get those to you and to Dana. Thanks for playing Jargon <laughs> Gymnastics. <laughs> you didn't remember the name of your own game. Oh, That's golly. crazy. So, Colleen, let's see your finished product now. All right. I'll get mine. You get ours, and I'll just. We'll, to, we'll go back to the kitchen view. We'll go to back okay. to the kitchen yeah. chair. All right. You're so right. versatile. Oh, I love it. Look at my big brownies. You know, some people like their people with have big brownies. Here we gotta see. We gotta see if Carl. Carl making an appearance. Hello, Carl. Music. He's usually right here watching me when I do it. So this is, I kept the tin foil on, but here we go. Let's compare. Oh, you cut yours. See, I didn't cut mine. Yeah, yeah. I did. See, this I is cut where them. It's loaded. This is where I got the little bit of the lava cake thing. So I'm really, yeah. I wonder if I could cut into it. Hold on, let me go get oh. a knife. Yeah, they, they came out. We've been chomping they're, at the bit to try it. They're quite thick and gooey. You can see the cake, the cookie on the bottom. And you can see a little bit of the peanut butter cup in there. Ooh. Pretty amazing. Now, Colleen, I wanted to ask you, uh, like your your meatballs, that was a family recipe, right? No, um, that's, it was, it's, every time I make meatballs, I make them a little bit different, but they're my, re it's my recipe. It's your own personal recipe. It's my own personal recipe. Where do you get yeah. most of your recipes from? Are they just things that you've heard or people tell you this would be a good thing to make or? No, I, like, and I, what I do is uh, I, I'm obsessed with like cooking shows, cookbooks and online recipes. So I, I read and read and read and I find the things that I personally like the best. Uh-huh. And that's what I make. And through trial and error, I found I typically like my meatballs more pork with more pork than more beef. Right. Yeah. So, uh, but I made them with all three. But I, I like the way pork tastes, so that's the way my my. Uh, so two questions. And be careful. I don't want you distracted with your giant knife there while you're doing this. Over to the spatula. Okay. <laughs> uh, what recipes we might we be seeing in the future? Well. I'm thinking because it's summertime. Uh -huh. I, just, I just did my uh, deviled eggs one. Oh yes, okay. Because that's a pretty popular uh, recipe when I, you know, when I come to a cast party and people that like the my version of the deviled eggs, they go so quickly. So I just did deviled eggs. Yep. I'm thinking I'll do like you know a, a mac my macaroni salad. I mean traditional recipes. Summertime stuff, yeah. You know, okay. and, um, there is also one recipe that is really really close to my heart. And it, I've never seen anybody, any, a recipe like it. It was my great grandmother's um, Christmas Eve nut sauce. And from what I understand, you know, it, it was a, the Christmas Eve, it was the seven fishes and whatnot. But I also learned through my brother that they didn't do a red sauce. So that's why we had this nut sauce. And it was hazelnuts and walnuts, two to one ratio, just kind of cooked down for the whole day, served over vermicelli pasta. Huh. And, Served with olives too, so I use a variety of olives with the pits in them because that holds the, the flavor. But it's so unique, and it's a love hate kind of recipe. But uh, me and my brother, we all love it. It's traditional, and people that have tried it either love it or hate it. So I want to do that to honor my great grandmother. I want to sure. do that. 
but I haven't perfected it because when she made it, she made it for like a hundred people. I mean, we had family right. that came in, so she made a vat of it. Well, let me ask you, did, did she have a recipe or did she just make it from heart all the time? I have from heart, yeah. Oh, yeah. Back in the day where she had to crack all the walnuts and all the hazelnuts by hand. Wow. They didn't, I mean, now I just go into the store and here you can buy them in bulk, you know, all right. shop. Yeah. You know, those family recipes are just tricky. I have been, I've been trying for years and years and years to recreate my mom's red sauce, her spaghetti sauce, right? Gravy. And I could never get it quite right. And I was having coffee with my sister and she said, are you remembering the salt pork? I said, salt pork, what? She said she rendered salt pork first and then she put the tomato paste in and then she, so I last week did that. And then at, toward the end, it had been simmering for a couple of hours. I dipped some bread in there and tasted it and tears came to my eyes because oh, it tasted so much like my mom's sauce. So, so uh, it but was I, I know it, what, crazy. I know what you're talking about. Lori has, uh, years ago, she put together a, a recipe book of her mom's recipes. And, but her mom was terrible at writing things down or measuring, like you said, you, and, oh, a lot of cooks don't like to measure. You say, ah, that looks right, we'll go with that. And it would say on it for uh, put put this amount of baking powder in until it looks right, <laughs> <laughs> and you don't know. So I mean, uh, it, it's wonderful those traditions are passed down, and that you can do it. I mean, Michael was drooling over your. your I'll nut be sauce. in line for your nut sauce. Yes, there you do go. You I'll be watching that one because that sounds amazing, especially with the olives in there. Yeah. I'll be all over it. And there's a variety of olives, and you know, something as kids we never knew what was in it. She starts out with olive oil. We've added garlic to it. I don't know whether she did garlic, but you take the anchovies and you kind of let them dissolve in the oil and then you add the olives, then you add hot water. And you let, just let it cook down, cook down, cook down, cook down for the day until it kind of changes into a nice rich uh, color because it's not very pretty, you know, because it's like a brownish gray, but. Most of my favorite foods are brown, so it's okay. <laughs> well, uh, so Colleen, Colleen I, uh, I do have another question yeah. for you. Colleen, oh, look at that. Oh, oh that look at the looks... gooey. Oh, those cookies. Oh, that, oh, that came out perfect. Oh, that perfect. looks amazing. See, all of my all of my cookie goo melted and got cooked into everything else, I think. No. Yeah, that looks amazing. Now, the, the, the other question, I think, Colin, we might have mentioned this before, or I think I, I commented on one of your things. When are you going to get to the point where you have a studio audience with you for your recording? <laughs> I can't wait to have a studio audience yes, for one of these special recipes. And I'll volunteer to sit there while you're making nut sauce. <laughs> and, and, well, I have to tell you, well, that's an all day thing, but I'll that's sit there all day. I'll bring the wine. <laughs> but that's why I don't cook live on Facebook because a lot of, I see a lot of women, uh, you know, doing their cooking shows and they go live and I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. no. But, I mean, you could still have an audience and not be live. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Sure. We can laugh at all your Put it in your theater, you know, put out a little, we got to get a little kitchen over in the corner. Yes. Hey, we'll take care of it. Yes. And then we can film it and then we could be, you know, we'll do the three cameras. It'll be like Lucille Ball. Yeah. That, and that, and that's absolutely right. So Colleen, listen, uh, now, now some theater questions. Okay. You were in rehearsal uh, with Goshen players before this all happened, right? For Lost in Yonkers, uh, one of my favorite shows of all time. Uh, and you were playing the grandmother, one of my favorite oh. roles of all time to see on stage. That yes. is an actor's role. Oh. Uh, is there a favorite role that you've played on stage yet? Is there um, I have two. Um, yeah. My favorite one for comedy was Maria Morelli in Lend Me a Tenor. Uh -huh. Loved playing her. I loved it because she came on, she was a force of nature, and then she left for most of the show. Then she came back. It was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So that was, I had so much fun doing Maria Morelli. Um, and the other one was, of course, it was a dream role, was the Nurse Ratched. I've always wanted to play Nurse Ratched. Yeah, yeah. I, it was, was scary. Great it was like watching you in, in um, the other one. Uh, Fireflies. Fireflies, thank you. I like up there. Yeah, yeah. You creepy we do so many comedic roles over the years, and we've done several shows together. We've been husband and wife three times, at least. Um, but seeing you do a dramatic role like that, in which you were really chewing a lot of scenery in that show. Yeah. And you were nasty. You were downright nasty. Oh. And that had to be that had to be a, a wonderful departure for you. 
Well, you know, I, I, I prefer, I, you know, I really enjoy dramas. I, and a lot of people don't do them. I, I love directing dramas. I like performing in dramas. I like shows that make you a little uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so it, it was something I've always wanted to do. I, I loved the actress that played it in, um, in, uh, with Jack Nicholson and whatnot. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. There's right. I'm true. But it was I'm trying escaped, to, The name escapes me right now, too. Yes. You got I didn't, the Oscar I didn't for it. want to do her, but I, I also know that she, I read the book, you know, to try to get a better understanding of her to see if she had, if she was sympathetic at all, you know? So, I mean, it, it was, it, yeah, she was a, an, an interesting character to play. Mm -hmm. Well, you were brilliant. Uh, bucket list role. Well, Nurse Ratchet was one of them. Um, you know, I really, I directed it, and I really would like to play someday Sister Aloysius in uh, doubt. In doubt, yeah. yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That's yeah. great. You know, there, there's a show that I would love to see you in. Uh-oh. Agnes of God. Whoa. You know the show? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. As Mother Superior? Mother Superior is one of those roles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Great show. Great show. What is it about you and a, and a habit? I know. <laughs> so important in my character, you know. Well, you know what? There's one habit that she has that we absolutely love, and that's cooking. Eh, oh, nice segue. Oh, yes. that's good. Cooking with Colleen Renzulo. Make sure that you subscribe to her YouTube channel. There's a link that you can follow to that down below the screen. Please subscribe to her channel. Watch everything she does. The it's food amazing. is great. She's beautiful. You get to see Carol. Yeah. Carol. And maybe Gordy. Every once in a while, you get to see Gordy, but usually you hear Gordy in the other room screaming because he's a bird and he just doesn't like it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, gl I'm glad that you that you clarified. It's a bird and not a child locked in the other room. <laughs> it's a bird. So, so Colleen, thank you so much for being here with us tonight, for sharing your slutty brownie recipe with the world. We're gonna we're gonna be enjoying you. our slutty brownies. Uh, we hope that everybody out there does the same thing. We've had a great time cooking with you tonight. Uh, oh, yeah. all right. Thank you so Thank much, you Colleen. So much, Colleen. Thank you. you for having me, Ed. It was so You're much welcome. fun. Mwah. We love I miss you guys. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, that was amazing. That was amazing. We hope that you guys cooked along yep. uh, with, uh, with Colleen. And if you didn't, that you wrote it down. Really, uh, it took me this morning a very small amount of time to cook the ones that I made for us. I didn't uh, get that far. No, you didn't get that far. And uh, Michael might want to take that brownie mix home with him and cook it. Yeah. Uh, you know, it might be good for Ruthie, you know? <laughs> no, I think chocolate's bad for a dog. Yeah. Hey, uh, you know what? Uh, next week. It's a special show. It's a special show next week. We are doing the second edition of Voices for Phoenix. So it's another collection of monologues. And it's going to be featuring featuring Dan Willie, Killian Meehan, Casey Ross, Leland Schick, mm -hmm. Deb Goodman, and Jonathan Ross. They're all going to be doing uh, monologues. I want to thank uh, Chris Evans and Robert Schnosky for coordinating that. And of course, our techie producer, Michael Calabrese, who's always stepping up and taking care of that stuff. A complete list of the monologues will be listed on our Facebook page coming soon. We have a week to do it. So We'll put them up there for you, and we'll we'll uh, make sure that you know what's going on. Uh, so mm -hmm. you can remember to subscribe to our channel. That's very important. Yeah, he's he's chewing, so I'll say this: you can subscribe to our channel also, uh, and, and you can donate to Phoenix Stage Company at any time. There's a link below your screen, uh, and anybody who donates gets one of our Theater Strong bracelets, which is one of our new our new programs. Back up a little bit. If you subscribe to our. our our podcast on i on um youtube youtube thank you um so you can subscribe anonymously anonymously but if you subscribe with your name you could be a contest winner in future episodes. and i'm sure that's somewhere in the settings of youtube that you can subscribe anonymously or let people see your name mm -hmm. if we see your name then you can win prizes from our participants who come and play uh jargon gymnastics with us yes so uh we need to Thank our sponsors, yes, but I need to do, do this first. So uh, we need to thank our sponsors for today. Tim, who's our first sponsor? As always, thank you so much to Black Hog Brewery. Brewing, Brewing Company. Company. I keep getting that wrong. I'll get it right someday. We love Black Hog. We miss them terribly. We can't wait to get back to them. They're in Oxford, mm -hmm. Connecticut. You can still get beer from them. You can. You can get it uh, by ordering it online or actually driving up, and they will deliver. But 
fingers crossed. Hopefully, the tasting room will be open. I'm, I'm hoping in this next round, on the I 17th so. of June, the next it's round so. opens, yeah. and they might be able to open their tasting room up a little bit. That would be wonderful. It would be it'd be nice to be able to go there. We also need need to thank Deb Crine and Sierra Ridge Media Arts. They thank are a full you, service Deb. production house. Thank you, Deb, for everything you do for us. Things like this sign back here, divided in half by a shower curtain right now, but yep. uh, we we really love our Deb. So thank you very yep. much for everything you do. We need to also thank our guest, Colleen Renzullo, Cooking with Colleen. What a fun show. It was great. So uh, thank you so much to her, our tech producer, Michael Calabrese, mm -hmm. our lighting genius, Al Hathaway, who delivered the coffee with and his social distancing drive-through poll. Another Al Hathaway invention. That's true. We also need to thank Sharon Hauck for all of her uh, graphics design work for us. She makes all of our slides and stuff. And we really appreciate all the work that she does for us. So thank you very much, Sharon. Yep. Uh, don't forget, subscribe to our channel. You can uh, make a donation at any time for your local theater by going to phoenix-stage-company.square.site or simply follow the link. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thank you for tuning in again. And we hope to see you again next time.